I'm going to share some stories about some of the challenges the church is going through today. One of the major areas of conflict around the world, and it varies from country to country, but it, it, it affects every country. One of the major areas of conflict is music. Satan knows that God will not accept anything that's impure. So all Satan has to do is to take something beautiful and mix it with a little bit of impurity from the world and it is no longer acceptable to God. Therefore, he accepts it as worship to him. God does not accept 90% sacred with 10% worldly. God does not accept 99% sacred and 1% worldly. God only accepts 100% sacred. And I have seen this battle happening all over the world. It's dividing the church, the different opinions. But let me share a couple of experiences that basically speak for themselves about how God looks at music and how Satan looks at music. I was in Australia. I was invited twice to have speaking appointments throughout the country. In one of my sermons, I spoke on the subject of music and heavenly music in particular. I've never heard angels sing. My grandmother did when she was a little girl. And I've met other people that have heard angels sing. And it is the most beautiful experience that they have ever had. Beautiful, harmonic, melodious, soul-lifting music. I've never heard angels sing. I'm looking forward to it one day. But I spoke on heavenly music as being the standard for the church. I don't get involved with different groups. Is this group okay? Is that group okay? What about this? I don't get involved because I, I don't even know all the groups. I don't even pay, try to memorize how many groups there are. I just simply hold up a standard and say, this is your standard, church. Heavenly music, what the angels sing, that's the standard because we're going to sing like that throughout eternity. One of the ladies in church, I'm leaving for Australia on Sunday and I'm, I'm going to be staying at her brother's house, a, very, a, friend, a, a family that we're very close to. But she went home. She didn't know how to understand heavenly music. And she said, Lord, I, I just don't understand. What is heavenly music? How am I to know? Please show me. She was outside hanging up her clothes that she had washed. And suddenly, from inside the house, she heard such lovely music coming out as she has never heard before. She stopped to listen. She left her basket of clothes. And she went into the house to see where's that music coming from. When she opened the door to her house, inside in her living room were two angels. Their wings were folded. Their heads were bowed. Their arms were crossed. She immediately recognized that they were worshiping God. And she fell down on her knees beside them to worship with them. The song, the music continued for a while. And when finally the last strain faded away, she opened her eyes. The angels were no longer in her living room. But on the television were two words. Heavenly music. 
At least there's one lady in Australia that knows exactly what heavenly music sounds like. She describes it as being the most soul-inspiring, pure melody and harmony that she's ever heard in all her life. Other stories of those that have heard angelic music describe it as drops of light that, that strike them and it fills them with tremendous joy. Heavenly music is something that we can only imagine. We can never really understand it till we actually hear it. It is so beautiful. We have 48 radio stations in the country of Venezuela. We started that radio station chain some years ago, and it kept growing and growing. 48. We carried that station on our satellite, and we transmitted it over the internet. And I used to monitor it as I, as I tune in to all our t different TV networks. Today, God has blessed us with 12 television networks and four radio networks. And it's growing. But I used to listen to that radio station in Venezuela, and I wasn't happy with everything that I heard. They had some contemporary music that I certainly did not agree with, did not meet the standard of heavenly music. And so I, I wrote an email, and I spoke with Oliver. I said, Dear Oliver, some of the choices you are making are definitely not acceptable. You must raise the standard higher on your choices of music or we will remove it from the satellite. I do not want to be responsible for transmitting anything over any station of that caliber. Well, he didn't really agree with me too much. He said, Gracias, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. I will be considering your advice. The next week, Pastor Stephen Bohr from the Fresno Central Church went down to Venezuela where he was raised. He had a campaign, evangelistic campaign, in that city. And while he was there and the radio station was carrying it live, they gave him a tour of the radio station and he heard some of the music and he said, Oliver, what kind of choices are you making? You must raise the standard higher. This is not acceptable. Well, that was two now. First it was David Gates and now Stephen Bohr. So he said, Lord, if I am wrong, please, I surrender, show me. What am I supposed to do? How do I make my choices? The next seven, he's an elder in one of the churches there. He received a phone call from a, a lady that had been coming to church. She was not yet an Adventist, but she said, my daughter is possessed. Her counselor that she talks to every day is a dead person. She sees the dead person. She counsels with the dead person. Sometimes she acts like a lion or a tiger crawling on all fours and growling. She is not a normal person she is possessed by a demon. Could you please send some elders from the church to pray with her? So Oliver decided to go down with another elder and they went down to see this young girl. When they got into the house, the mother called the young lady and introduced Oliver. And she said, oh, are you Oliver from the radio station? Yes. My counselor, the dead person, he loves your station. He sings so beautifully. Why, when you put this group on, and this group on, and this group, and that group, and the other group, and this man, and that lady, he and I will just sit there and we will sing. We will turn on your radio station 
and he loves your music so much. And he began to think, Satan loves my music? Oh, he loves that evangelical contemporary music. Why, you're one of his favorite radio stations because you play so much of it. In fact, I'm going to call him right now. And she, she did a few prayer-like incantations. And then she said, he's here now. And we both want to tell you that we love the music you have on your Adventist radio station. He sings so beautifully. He loves the rhythm. He loves the beats. He loves contemporary Christian music. Thank you so much for putting it on your radio station. Oliver was convicted to his heart that this was the third time in two weeks that God was speaking to him. So he pulled out an Adventist hymnal and he said, I would like to see if your spirit guide likes this music. And he started singing hymns from the hymnal. Immediately, the girl said, Stop it! He doesn't like that music! But he kept singing. Under his wings, I am safely abiding. Stop it! He cannot stand it! He sang one hymn. He sang two hymns. He sang three hymns. He sang four hymns. The girl was desperate. She said, if you don't stop singing from that hymnal, he has to leave. By the time he got done with four hymns, she said, never mind, he's gone. He cannot stand to be in the presence of those hymns that you were singing. You can imagine what Oliver did. He went straight to the radio station. He pulled off all of those Christian singers, contemporary Christian music, 100%. He took them off. And he said, I am not going to broadcast any music that the devil likes to sing. Now, you might say, isn't this taking away our freedom of choice? No. You can still listen to the music and you can sing along with the devil. Your choice. You still have freedom of choice. But if you want to honor God, if you want to sing music that the devil cannot stand to listen to, try using the Adventist hymnal and sing those beautiful songs that were written by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That when you sing those songs, it elevates your heart to heaven. The angels will sing along with you. And Satan cannot stand the presence. You know what we have learned? We have learned in our television networks and our radio networks that when we play that kind of music, beautiful, sacred, heavenly music, no worldly rhythm, no jazz, no worldly sounds, beautiful instrumental and vocal music, sung for the honor and glory of God, people immediately notice something. The darkness must leave the room. Our greatest, uh, the greatest secret that we have found, the greatest magnet attracting people of all religions, all denominations, believers and non-believers alike, is heavenly music. They can tell the difference, but many Seventh-day Adventists cannot and they fight over their contemporary music, words that just go over and over and over and over, beats and rhythms. And while we're fighting that, the devil is laughing at us because there's certainly not going to be any of that in heaven. I was in Montreal, Canada. I was preaching for It Is Written in French. The French It Is Written. Il est écrit. 
It was their 10th anniversary, and the director had invited me to speak. And when I went to that beautiful church to speak, I noticed that the pianist, a black man from Haiti, was playing such beautiful music, it was like his fingers were, were speaking a language that was so beautiful, I said, that is truly heavenly music. And we heard some of that music tonight. And I said, where did you learn to play like that? He said, would you like to hear my story? This afternoon I will be telling my testimony and we're going to be recording it on video. I said, I would love to hear it. I will be there. So I came back in the afternoon to hear his testimony. And the testimony he told was quite sobering. You see, when he was a little boy in Haiti, Haiti has a very powerful voodoo influence. I've been to Haiti eight times. And you can feel demonic influence throughout the island. When tourists go to Haiti, the primary number one attractive tourist trade in Haiti is voodoo sacrifices. Watching the sacrifices of goats and roosters and chickens. Watching possessed people dance around the stage. Number one, tourist trade. When I was a little boy in Haiti, my mother was dying. She was already in a fetal position, skin and bones only. She could not move. Every day we would wake up and say, Daddy, is Mommy still alive? Yes, Mommy is still alive. Every time we came home from school, Daddy, is Mommy still alive? Yes, she is still alive. But she could not move. She lay in bed, had to be turned one way and the other, skin and bones. One day, this little boy, Hudson Pierre, decided to pray and ask God for a special favor. Dear Jesus, if you will heal my mommy, I want to dedicate my music skills to you, my fingers and my mind. You see, he was, he was just a, a little boy, but he was learning how to play the piano. If you will heal my mommy, I want to dedicate my fingers and my mind to you. A few days later, at about 2 o'clock in the morning, There was a knock on the door. Strange. They went to open the door, and there was a woman dressed in white, apparently a nurse of some kind. She said, I have a syringe and I have a shot that I must give your mother. Sure, come in. I mean, it can't do any harm. Why would a nurse come so late at night? What kind of shot would she have? They didn't know. But they took her upstairs. They pulled back the sheet. They exposed her hip. The nurse gave her a shot. He said, I know it was a real shot because I saw the blood stain that it left on the sheet. It really was a real needle. It was a real shot. And she left. We went, back to, we went back to bed. The next morning, when I got up, my mother was in the kitchen cooking breakfast. And I have never forgotten my vow to God. My fingers belong to God. My mind belongs to God. I quickly rose as a leading musician in Haiti. God blessed my fingers and I became one of the top pianists in the country. Eventually, I immigrated to Canada. And all my talents and skills 
are dedicated to sacred music. But one day, knocking on doors, inviting people to the evangelistic campaign, to our music concert, he met a lady at the door that had steel eyes. The lady looked at him and said, I could never come to your concert. But why? The spirits whom I serve could never live in the presence of your music. But I will come to your church someday. He said, How will I know when you come? Oh, I'll send word. The lady who you invited is here. She did not come to the concert, but several weeks went by, and then one day, he received a note. The lady whom you invited is here. He looked around. He never saw her until the very end after church was over. She came forward and she said, I told you I would come. Well, I'm glad you came. But, but tell me, how, how come you could come to church, but you could not come to my concert? She said, that's because my people are here. That man back there, he's mine. He turned around to look. It was the church treasure. He immediately fell on four feet and started slobbering. On, he fell down on all fours, I mean, like, a, like an animal. Then she said, without looking, he's mine too. He looked there, it was one of the elders. And he fell down on all fours and started slobbering like an animal and spitting. He says, you see, I have my people and that's why I can come. Well, he was quite surprised, but not totally because he'd been raised in Haiti and in Haiti there's a lot of spiritualism everywhere and it has to affect the church too. But he was surprised that some of the leaders in that church were affected. And she said, if you don't know who I am, I am the head of all the spiritual activity that takes place in the Caribbean. Thousands are under my control. And she said, I would like to make you an offer. I will make you the richest man in Montreal if you will play music that has rhythm. If you will bring in jazz, rock, country, if you will bring in those rhythms into the church, I will make you the richest man in Montreal. And if you don't, I will kill you. Hudson Pierre told his story and he said, I will never violate my promise to God even if I die, I will never bring in worldly rhythms into my music. And they can't touch him. He is untouchable. Satan cannot do anything to him because he is surrounded by God's presence. And today, young people, brothers and sisters, there is a war being fought just on that one issue. What is heavenly music? you have to make some decisions. But I will tell you this, that the ex-choir director from heaven by the name of, who used to be Lucifer, now known as Satan and the devil, he does know music. He knows how to write beautiful music with words that lead away from God. And he knows how to write beautiful words with worldly music. It doesn't matter to Satan as long as the music is mixed with the world. You can sing beautiful praises to God, but if the music is not pure, you're not talking to God, you're talking to Satan. God only accepts pure music. 
By the way, that applies also to what you watch. It applies to what you read. It applies to what you eat. If you're going to be a son or daughter of God, it applies to how you dress. God is preparing a people today. Revelation 14 says there is a people in their mouth was found no lies, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And God is preparing that people today, a bride without spot or wrinkle. And it is my desire in all my imperfect body and nature to so surrender to God that God can do something with me that will honor him. And perfect surrender equals perfect victory. That is our challenge today. Not, not, to, not salvation by works, no. We can never be saved by works. It's called surrender. And perfect surrender is equivalent to perfect victory because when you surrender, you don't fight the battle. God fights it and he never loses. And that is what God is calling his people today, a much higher standard. I wonder what the Seventh-day Adventist church will look like when persecution begins. I wonder what the Seventh-day Adventist church will look like when there's only a few thousand instead of 20 million. I wonder what the Seventh-day Adventist church will look like when you have somebody so totally committed they're willing to die rather than dishonor God and bring impure things into the church in their lives. I wonder what the Seventh-day Adventist church would look like that will make it so attractive that the entire world will want to join the church. The entire world that choose to follow God, that is. I wonder what will be so attractive. If I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me that when they see the Seventh-day Adventist church, everybody will say, now that is a church you want to belong to because they're so loving, they're different, they have high standards. Did you know that institutions that have high standards, educational institutions that have high standards, attract more students than those that don't? Did you know that? If you lower the standards, students leave. Only as an institution has high standards are people willing to pay the price of Christian education. If Christian institutions, Seventh-day Adventist institutions, compromise on standard, they will lose their students. You never win by compromising standards. The higher the standard, in fact, military schools, military schools have extremely high standards. And people are always trying to get in. They're full all the time. Mediocre institutions that lower the standards, you can find them anywhere. And they're all struggling to try to survive. But I, I would say that if a Seventh-day Adventist college or university sets a standard so high that very few people can get in, there would be a long line of people outside trying to get in. You must dress by this standard. The Word of God is our standard. We have a high music standard. We have a high moral standard. And the higher the standards, the greater the blessing, and God will raise up that institution like he did Daniel and hold it up and make it the head and not the tail. May this institution be one of those. Always hold up God in your life. Hold up a high standard. If you're a teacher, administrator, pastor, worker, hold up a standard so high that when people see it, they think of God. Someday soon, the crisis will burst upon a church with blinding force and whoever's left afterward, God will use to finish the work. But very few will remain standing unless you get ready, get ready, and get ready. God will do the work for you, but there's a preparation process of surrender. We must learn to surrender. 
And as we learn to surrender, God will work out his perfect work. And tonight, I want to invite you again. I'd like, I like to invite you to make decisions. It's decision time. If we can't make decisions, why, are we, why do we call ourselves Seventh-day Adventists? It is decision time for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. If it is your desire, if you have heard God talking to you and saying, you need to raise your standard in dress, music, what you watch, what you read. If you have heard God calling you to a higher standard and it's your choice tonight to honor God by releasing, surrendering all your desires, all your loves, the love of the world and the lust thereof, and saying, Lord, as I am, you can take me. I surrender to you tonight so that you can, in my life, establish the standard of heaven, heavenly music, heavenly dress, heavenly food, heavenly reading material. If you can do that for me, I want to surrender to your power tonight. If that is your desire, I want to invite you to come forward for a special word of prayer. If you come forward, you no longer own yourself. God will own you, and you're asking God to live that standard in your life. There will be a people that will reach that standard. Heaven has waited a long time. The bridegroom gave his life for the bride nearly 2,000 years ago, and he wants to come get his bride. But the bride is not ready yet. The bride has on stained garments, and God wants to place on it that beautiful bride garments in pure white, Christ's righteousness. Could I invite you to kneel with me now as we pray? Heavenly Father, we wish tonight that we could hear the heavenly choir. We wish they were here singing so that we could understand a little bit more of the beauty of heaven and the music that worships and honors you. We wish, Lord, that you were here in person, but we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We, we look forward to the day when we can talk to you face to face, when we can, we can look into the face of God the Father after having been translated with pure bodies and pure minds to be able to talk face to face with God the Father. We look forward to that day. But first, there's a preparation process that has to be done. A purification process. Lord, we have sinned against you. We have allowed the world to creep into our homes, into our lives, into our churches and institutions. We have compromised. We have allowed standards to be lowered. All over the world, we are fighting this battle. We ask that you will bless as an institution, Lord, the Central Philippine Adventist College. May it be an institution filled with the Holy Spirit with the highest standard that a Christian can have so that everybody knows that there is a college that has purity in dress, purity in music, purity in educational disciplines, purity in the young people, the staff, the personnel, and the administration. Lord, hold up this institution and every person that's here tonight and each family represented we pray for our administrators, we pray for our pastors, we pray for our leaders, especially for the General Conference coming up June 23, in just a few weeks, Lord. The, the world body of Seventh-day Adventists will gather together in Atlanta. I will be there, Lord willing. Gospel Ministries International has three booths. And we will have young people and missionaries from all over the world that will be speaking with people. We will be producing media. We will be 
recording their testimonies. We will be giving away DVDs, books, and materials. We will be encouraging people to hold the standards high. But Lord, decisions will be made that will affect the future of the church, whether to compromise or to raise the standard. That is the choice we have. And for so long, we have made choices, Lord, that have not raised the standard but lowered them. We are fighting this battle. We are under attack. We are your people. This is your church. But Lord, we need your power in our lives. We need your Holy Spirit to take total control of the events that are about to happen in Atlanta. Overrule man's planning. Institute your own plans in our stead. And every person who's made a decision here tonight as a sweet savor and incense, present it into your presence. Take us, mold us, perfect us, use us to finish the work, finish the work in us, and put your Holy Spirit and your character in us and cover us with the robe of righteousness, Jesus' perfect robe of righteousness, Christ our righteousness. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath day. And we praise you and we thank you and we elevate our request before you through the blood of Jesus Christ and in his name we pray. Amen. Emphasize that only hymns must be sung or played. How do you define or qualify hymns or heavenly music? Uh, only hymns or songs must be played? Be sung or played. Oh. Okay, sure. These are the official message girls, so if you need to... <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is for follow-up about what um, Roxanne just read. Um, it's also heavenly music, because ha um, last um, Friday, we preached that heavenly music basically are those hymn songs, hymnal songs. We want to know, we want to know what's, um, where can we draw the line between heavenly music and contemporary music? Okay, thank you. I, that, similar, similar question. Uh, I don't believe that only hymns are heavenly music. I can name, a, you name you a couple that are not in the hymnal, I don't think, and they're heavenly music. Uh, As a deer panteth by the water. Right? That's not in the hymnal, I don't think. Uh, another one would be uh, In His Time. You know that song? In His Time, right? Beautiful contemporary music that is totally heavenly. And God is composing new heavenly music every day. Contemporary just means it's a recent composition as compared to the old hymns of a hundred years ago or longer. It's contemporary to us. You're my contemporary. We lived at the same time in history, right? So contemporary hymns are those that are being composed today. But, but we refer to contemporary, it's kind of taken on a different meaning. Contemporary refers to the new style, not music that is composed in our day and time. Dr. Heidi's composed music which is contemporary music. But it doesn't have the contemporary style. The contemporary style has certain characteristics, and I would rather almost her explain that's her specialty as music, not mine. I'm a musician, but I'm not a professional musician. But when I refer, since you're asking me for my definition, when I refer to heavenly music, I mean that we're not mixing the styles of the world in with worship music to God. And you know what I mean by the styles of the world. If you don't hear the words, the music conveys a different style. I've heard music with, I was walking with my dad one time and we heard in a church, a general conference actually, they were, they were preparing for special music and my dad and I were at the end of the hall and I said, can you hear the words? He said, no. But wouldn't you, wouldn't you swear that was in a bar? It was a whiny type of music like, like when you go to a bar and people are drinking and you hear a little mm, right? I mean, you understand what I'm talking about, right? They just sit up there and, and they you know, wind their love songs and a few other things and, and the people are drinking and that's the style it was. And then there's definitely the biggest problem we're having is dealing with rock. Rap. I mentioned this. This is, this is creeping in a church everywhere. Rock and rap. Since when are you going to hear rap music in heaven? 
I won't even call it music, rap noise. Do you expect to hear angels doing rap? Anybody here actually has doubts about that? But it's in the church, and it's supported all the way from the top. Advertised in Ministry Magazine. So you can see that if this, is, this is a divided issue that we're dealing with. Heavenly music does not include rap, and it does not include rock. Now, how do I define heavenly music? My definition is really not that important, but I will try to describe what I consider heavenly music. I consider heavenly music to be music that is, number one, melody dominates. Number two, harmony comes next. It's very harmonious, not mainly dissidence. You know what dissidence is, right? Chords that don't mix very well, that create tension. Now, you can musically create a tension and release it, but much of the world's music today has tension in it all the time. So it's mainly melodic, harmonic, and a very, it has rhythm. Songs have rhythm. Would you say that? Onward, Christian soldier, marching as to war. Would you say that has rhythm? That's a march rhythm. Right? How about, as a deer panted by the water? Does that have rhythm? Yes. So rhythm is to be in the background to carry. How about us? Hmm? Is that in the background? It's not in the background. That's the main thing of the, of the noise. So it's totally upside down. Satan takes the proper order of things and flips it upside down. He says, physical relationship is love. And God says, no, physical relationship is the outpouring of love. It's, it's, it's the result of having love. And we call it free love. And it's not even love. You abuse other people, you use them up, and you throw them out like trash. That's love. That's what the devil says. So music is melodic, harmonic, and rhythm slightly in the background to carry the music along. When you make the other way around, and then there's, of course, then you could get into types of rhythms. You have rock rhythm where, sh boom, sh boom, sh -sh boom, where you, where you have the offbeats. An expert in music could teach us a lot more. So heavenly music has none of those worldly rhythms. Jazz, the whining of the, of the jazz music, the, the blues, and, uh, and other types of music. Angels don't sing that. Anybody who's ever heard angels sing, heavenly music will raise immediately the words and the thoughts to heaven. It is worship music. What we heard in church yesterday, how great thou art. If you weren't in the presence of God, you weren't anywhere. That was worship music. Beautiful, harmonic, glorious music that raises. Now you say, but I don't like that style. If you listen to the other style, you know what? I like rock music if I listen to it enough. When I was a teenager, I had some favorite types of music I used to listen to all the time. I loved it, and it was rock. You can get to like it after a while. So if you like something, it doesn't make it right. Get to like heavenly music and train your tastes. By the way, I don't like onions. Are onions good for you? My wife is very adamant. Yes, they are. <laughs> I agree theoretically that onions are good for you, but I don't like to eat them. Is there something wrong with my taste? Yes. Sh should I not eat onions just because I don't like them? No. I should train my taste to like onions. Because I know they're good for me. The same way with heavenly music. Train your taste for music to love God's music. The hymnal is filled with them. By, by the way, are all hymns in the hymnal appropriate? <laughs> no. Not this latest hymnal. How about the song? I see if I can remember how it goes. Uh, Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. 
with the face. Oh, with the, yeah, let us fall on our knees with the face to the rising sun. Heresy. Catholic heresy forbidden by God. God forbade Israel to kneel down with their face to the rising sun. That's Catholic. Has no place in our hymnal. Oh, you say, David, now you're taking my faith. Is your faith that weak? No. I told you we're at war. I told you we're at war. Don't be surprised if every type of problem comes into the church. Don't leave the church because we're at war. Fight to hold up the standard. I would say almost all of the hymns in the church are pure heavenly music. Not all of them. Because we've had people making decisions that aren't the best. That's why I like to sing out of the older hymnals, but that's okay. I can choose the right ones. And some of the new material, some of the new music that's coming out is absolutely heavenly. Let us just make the right choices. Let us train our taste to be heavenly. And when we get to heaven, we'll be right exactly where we want to be with the type of music we like. Okay? That's right. You have another question.